Hi, yeah, I'm Hazel Jeffs. I'm the creator of Away From It All, or it was my idea at least. And I'm gonna answer your Q and A's. So, full disclosure, I asked for questions a few days ago and I read through them all and I thought, oh, I'll just write some like notes down for myself so I have some kind of vague script to follow when I'm doing a video so I don't like ramble too much. And those notes turned into, I don't can see that, but come on, Hazel. <laughs> One page. Second page. It is ridiculous. So I'm going to try not make this too like hideously long, but it it might be quite hideously long. Thanks for your lovely questions, by the way. I wasn't really expecting people to ask many things, and you did, and it was so sweet. Thank you. Awkwardly Emma on Twitter asks, "Were you inspired by any other literary-inspired web series?" Uh, yes, yes, I was. Um, I've been in love with most literary-inspired web series since about 2014. Um, so yeah, they, they sneaked in there. <laughs> so my all-time favourite IW is the autobiography of Jane Eyre. And I think I really took their cue when it came to um, including nature a lot, and also just generally including a lot of different locations. Another one would be the Mistlethwaite Archives, which I was a development assistant on, and I wrote about three episodes, including the title episode, but I didn't write a title, but I'm so proud of that. Um, yes. So that was my first experience of like the development process behind a web series, and um, I pretty much copied... Oh, it's got a new question! <laughs> hey Zoe, you just got, your question is going through on the, on the video. Yeah, so that was the first time I saw the whole like development process behind it, and I pretty much copied that model exactly. And they were doing Outer World Transmedia, um, I think they were Eastern Monks the first to do that. Um, and obviously we adopted that a lot with the phones. And then I'm just a big fan of the Candle Wasters and there's various like references to them in a few of the videos. Most obviously being the big flamingo hat which I bought for one of the meetups we did in London. Although I don't think, think I actually wore it, but I bought it for that. Yeah, and I just think we use a few of the web series tropes now and again. Although hopefully it's not super obvious all the time, but we've got a few. Okay, you deserve tea, otherwise known as Lindsay on Twitter asks, How did you get such an amazing team of writers? Well, Lindsay, funny you should ask that. I, a vision came to me in the night of this amazing writer called Lindsay, who was like aglow with light. And she came in through the window and said, Hazel, you should hire Lindsay for your web series to write for you. And I thought that seemed like a pretty good wreck. So, you know, I, I got her in. And then some other weirdo just showed up and I was like, yeah, this seems like a good writing team. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not funny. Hey, Lindsay. Lindsay's on the writers, didn't get that, you probably got that. Basically, I just put up a post on Tumblr saying, I really want to make this series, but I can't do it on my own. Would anyone be interested in helping? And a bunch of people surprisingly did, like a way, way surprising amount of amazing people emailed me about that. And that was my writing team and my transmedia team. And they are absolutely lovely. And I owe them an awful lot. And yes. Hi guys, you're amazing. Ginger Nifty on Twitter asks, what is Sheepgate? Well, Ginger Nifty, who is definitely not another one of my writers who is trolling me. Um, <laughs> you'll have to ask Gabriel, he's the, he's the only one who knows. Ginger Nifty also asks, will the nettles in Weatherby ever be addressed? Um, no. Boldwood, go out and do something yourself if you're worried. Like, you're meant to be a, like a community spirit kind of guy. You can do it yourself. Come on. You're like 30, you're fine. Uh, Shelby Stillwell on Twitter asked, um, what did the casting process for Fita look like? Okay, well casting was something that I was really freaked out about the idea of, like, from the beginning, because that's, like, getting new people onto the project to, like, be judgy and stuff. Um, and I'd never done anything like that before because, you know, English students didn't have any film experience over here. But basically I just wrote out a casting call on Google Docs and I wrote... Um, a page of sides for every character, or sometimes two pages, um, when I was on this very long delayed train from like London one time. And then I just posted that on all my social media sites, and to every free like casting call type sites I could find. Um, most of our cast founders are because of this Facebook group called um, Extra Shooters, which is the nearest city to me. Um, yep, yeah, so that's how we got... Ben, who plays Frank, and Lewis, who plays Boldwood, and um, Mirren, who plays Sherry. 
and then I think everyone else found us through casting call pretty much. And yeah, I just asked for self tapes because I would love to do like meeting up with people for real and chemistry test tests and all that, but we're on like a real time crunch and I don't really have a space to do that. Um, so yeah, that's what we went with and then we just cast people from that. Oh no, well, I didn't get, we didn't get everyone through that because um, even when we were shooting to start with, we didn't have a Gabriel and we didn't have an Henri. When we were doing the um, first read through, I just asked our cast and existing crew if they could help me get the word out a bit more. Um, we found Ed who plays Gabriel because he went to school with both of our cinematographers. And we found Ashley who plays Henri because he went to university with Debs who plays Bathsheba and Chelsea who plays Marianne. Shelby also asked, how did you go about securing such a great public space for monsters? In the end I went to this quiz night um, at um, GRWSA, um, which is this like private railway club slash pub in my town um, and that made me kind of remember that it existed and my mum had done some events there for her choir before so she knew the owners a little bit and yeah we just worked out with them really I sent a message on Facebook like explaining what we wanted to do and that we'd try and be really like unobtrusive and um, yeah then I went in and talked to them a bit myself and we arranged that um, yeah, we'd all buy lunch on the days we were shooting there and we'd go in on their quiet days. Okay, Media Musings 12 on Twitter asked, um, how do you balance writing slash creating with important life responsibilities? And I think there was a question on Tumblr which was similar. Yeah, um, a, a darling disaster on Tumblr also asked, how do you avoid becoming overwhelmed about the process of creating a running web series and how do you manage to stay disciplined? Um, how do you not come overwhelmed? You you don't. You become very overwhelmed a lot of the time and you just have to keep going anyway. Um, in my case at least. With all our pre-production and also our filming actually, I was really lucky because I didn't have to work around work or anything. I had finished university like earlier that month and I didn't have, I wasn't planning to get a job until the next school term had started. Yeah, so I just had a, a big chunk of free time and yeah, with pre-production, that was all I was doing every day, which we definitely needed because we were trying to get everything done in quite a small time frame and I was doing quite a lot of that. Yes, that wasn't so much a balance as just giving life over to it for a while. Um, yeah, it, I'm in a really privileged position that I was able to do that and just make this whole series really. Yeah, post-production for me was a little bit different because, um, yeah, I edit the series as well and do quite a lot of transmedia stuff um, because I work about 60 hours a week as well. I guess it's deciding what's important to you that week and what you can let afford to let slide that week in a way. Like there's been times where, I don't know, like recently the phones haven't been updated as much as they were because I've had to work quite a lot more. But there's been other weeks where I've thought, like I'm just gonna stay up all night and write the text messages for the next three weeks and edit them all and do that. And I'm gonna just do a couple of days work on about three hours sleep because um, I've had pretty like, slow days and I could probably cope with that. Anonymous on Tumblr asked, um, oh, is there anything in the series that you wish viewers had noticed? <laughs> I have, oh, I have two small cameos in it and none of my family noticed either of them, so that was great. <laughs> oh, the, um, I'm not sure if anyone did notice this, but no one commented on it. Um, the scar from episode 5 makes a reappearance later on, so I'll leave that with you. Rebecca Rich on Twitter, hey Rebecca, um, asks, were there any characters that surprised you in the adaptation process? Well, early on, like, Henri was like a main antagonist, and he was pretty awful, and now he's just more, like, a little bit pathetic but funny. And that's definitely, like, emphasised by Ashley's, like, portrayal of him, so that was quite nice. Oh, and also, um, up until like, a couple of weeks after I got the rest of the writers on board, um, Jen was still going to be a guy like um, they are in the book. And there was going to be a whole like conflict between them and Liddy and them like, learning to be a family as the series went on. I think Gabriel was like, the one who changed the most times during like trying to adapt him. Because um, like, really early on... Um, his journey was kind of being more assertive and taking more control of his life like after the initial bit with Sheepgate. Um, and he was going to be like this 
kind of really sensitive emo kid, pretty much. And I think, like, the emotional storyline we ended up going with him, um, and just, again, Ed's portrayal of him, was actually a lot more like the Gabriel of the book than I thought we were going to end up with. So that was interesting. <laughs> Emma Popcorn, YouTube sensation, um, asked, um, you should sort the characters into Hogwarts houses. Okay, so it's already canon that Gabriel's Hufflepuff, and um, both Robin and Lydia are Slytherins, and Sherry's a Ravenclaw. Um, and then Royal Quay decided that Bathsheba's a Gryffindor. We actually had this whole, me and um, Anna, one of the directors, had this whole conversation about this on like the third day of filming. And Ellie, who was one of our cinematographers, were just like, you are such nerds. And then we had an even big conversation about it in like the writer's Facebook group. So I, I, I know this, I got this covered. They weren't sure if Joe was a Gryffindor or Hufflepuff, but we thought, like, probably Gryffindor. Um, ooh, what else did we decide? So, Bath being ace was about the first thing I knew that we would do when I read Part of the Madding Crowd. I do think it's a pretty decent reading of the book. I mean, there's a lot more issues at play because it's how, like, women's sexuality could be written about in, like, Victorian era and all of that, so there were restrictions and tropes and things. But, like, on the face of it, the only person Bath's ever really attracted to in the book is Troy. And then she is, like, really conflicted about that attraction and, like, really scared of what she feels. Yeah, like, when he kisses her, like, she, like, freaking collapses and sobs. Every now and then in the book, like, Bathsheba, like, initiates something, like, a little bit romantic and then, like, freaks out and backs away again and then just tries to live her life normally. But then there's just, I don't know, the male gaze and stuff still following her about and all these guys still having all these feelings about her, which she's not very happy about mostly. <laughs> yeah, I just think a general like confusion with uh, towards romance and sex in the book was something that I thought, hey, that seems pretty familiar. And then, yeah, I pushed that a little bit further. And another big reason was just that I think in the book, the ultimate resolution of it all is that like a sense of like comradeship and just knowing another person completely, like in, in whatever way, is the only love stronger than death. Besides which, the passion usually called by their name is evanescent as steam. Um, yeah, and that was something that I thought um, Bath being ace would really draw into focus. Like, yeah, the strength of friendships and sexual relationships. Yeah, I wanted more ace stories that weren't just like one episode wonders, which are basically an info dump of like the Wikipedia entry about what asexuality is. Except for more recently with stuff like um, Nothing Like the Sun, which has done it a lot better. Yeah, I wanted to do that. And I know we don't focus on Bath being like ace all that much. I think she mentions it maybe twice. But oh, for me, that's it's always born in mind to every one of her episodes that that's the place she's coming from. She's always hiding a lot of herself and that being ace is a part of that, especially since she doesn't understand it and it frightens her for a long time. And yeah, that's another thing, just finding out your ace can be a bloody nightmare and I've never seen that story shown anywhere and I think we do that through the transmedia pretty well. Okay, another question from Rebecca Rish. What was your favourite part of the process after filming ended? Um, I complain about editing enough, but especially the episodes where there's some kind of musical montage, I do really enjoy it. Um, mostly quite a lot because of the outtakes. I really like running Bathsheba's Tumblr account, so I'm going to be sad I'm not doing that anymore. And I really like mostly running um, Liddy's Twitter accounts and like her commenting on everything on YouTube. And I like writing texts and doing the playlists. I, 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 I like transmedia. I, I complain about this a lot because it takes up so much of my life and because it has to be a thing pretty much every week that I do. But I do really love it at the same time. Uh, Emma Popcorn again and also Zoe Jasmine from Tumblr both asked what my future web series plans were. Um, I'm, I'm writing for a few at the moment. 
I'm writing for um, Twincidence, which Jessamine from the writing team is making, and that's going to be good. Um, and I've written for Maggie Hale's Corner, which is going to production soon, I think. Yeah, so I'm helping other people's, um, which is really great. I love doing that. Collaboration is the best. Um, as for stuff I'd make as like a main creator, I don't think I'm going to have time for like the foreseeable future because I'm going to be doing a teach training um, course next year, which I've heard is super intense. But like I always have ideas, and there's one which I would really like to do, which would be like a lot more minimalist than Away From It All is. But yeah, I don't think you'll hear from me for a while at least. I, I, I need a rest anyway. <laughs> let me sleep. Please let me sleep. <laughs> I've been tired for two years. Um, and the lovely Jenny, White Rose Cafe on Twitter, asked um, what my biggest struggle was making the series and how I got through it. I don't think we had that many like major catastrophes particularly. We had a few tight moments, like including the Gabriel casting thing, which I've talked about. I think the ongoing thing for me is just that I'm into that with social anxiety disorder and making this project involves a lot of having to be like a leader and all my filming involves being around people who I didn't know very well like most of the day and I find that really tricky. Yeah and just <laughs> related to that I have to direct a few episodes which is not my forte at all but I don't know. E you have to deal with situations as they arise, and I'll be trying to do that. <laughs> and the last question is another one from a darling disaster on Tumblr, and they asked, um, any tips for someone who would love to start a web series in the future? Thanks! You're welcome. Um, for this one I'm actually going to at least partially read off the notes that I did, because, I don't know, I was probably smarter earlier in the day than I am right now, because it's nearly half one in the morning. Um, Okay, no, this, this is very good. Like most of life, the main trick is to surround yourself with really excellent people who are way more talented than you are. Truth. Two, if you can possibly help it, don't try to write, redraft, and edit 53 episode web series within a month. Which is also, yeah, don't, don't do that. Like, we, we did it, just about. Um, but I... Oh, if I could re-edit the series, there would be many things. Another one I'd add is um, ask for help from your fellow creators. Um, there's a really, in the LIW community, there's just so many people who are willing to help with various things. Uh, sometimes, like with the amazing Anna and Kate, it's, oh hey, yeah, I'm going to come down and help you direct this series, and I'm going to do all this other behind the scenes stuff for you. Um, just because, just because they're amazing. Um, and sometimes it's just like really good advice about cameras and stuff. Um, yeah, lots of people can help and it's great. And just about halfway through filming a theatre, when I probably looked about three quarters dead and it was I think maybe like two in the morning and I was on my laptop like digitally buried under a pile of call sheets for the next couple of days. Um, my dad just came in and was like, Hazel, just remember that it's meant to be fun. And at the time, a little bit maybe resented that because it being fun was a reason that I wanted to do it. Because, you know, when you watch all the behind the scenes footage of these things, it always says it like fun. And it is, it's really fun. But yeah, like, I wanted to make it because I really, really wanted to. I, just, I wanted to tell a story, I wanted to tell a story in this medium. I had things to say. And I had characters that I couldn't get out of my head, and I wanted to see if I could do it. And I wanted to work with people who, they mean a lot to me, and who I really admire. Yeah, that was why I feel and felt a little bit mm, about that comment. But, I don't know, stop every now and then when you're feeling absolutely stressed and overwhelmed, and think about why you started doing the project, and if if what you're doing now is working towards that or even what come to be important about the project to you just check it still following along with that and just stop and think about how bloody lucky you are to be able to make a thing 
my whole Twitter has been as stressful, like, ah, this series, for like the last two years. And also, if you've met me, I've been, ah, this series, for the last year at least. Um, but I am so proud of everyone who did this. And I'm so lucky. And I've loved this so much. And thank you for watching.